Hey everyone, it's Cindy here with a whole new project. I know you're probably glad to see the end of that five ring binder if you've been paying attention to any of my videos. But what I have this time is a three ring binder. But what I did was I took all the scraps and things I had pulled out for that five ring binder and was able to do this one in just a matter of hours. So I wanted to show you a flip through with this. And I also wanted to show you this thing. I got it at Goodwill and it was a napkin holder and it was actually these wings here were going straight up and I bent them down. And actually when I did that, I broke it. So I've got it welded and wired, but it's gonna work fine. Cause what I wanted it for was like a book stand. So I could put a book on there and display it someplace, you know, and people can flip through it and it's it could be open instead of closed on the shelf. So anyway, I thought I would show you this journal on this shelf. Um, this was just something I got in at Goodwill or somewhere, and it was a um, name and address book, which, you know, people don't use these anymore. They use their phones. So anyway, um, I thought this would be fun for a journal. Of course, it's gardening theme. It's got the, uh, the tulips and the, well, you can see the picture. <laughs> it's got that picture. I just, you know, obviously it's a ring binder, so it's already all intact, and I, I just like the, the colors. And the print. I added this little um, patch I made. It's just some fussy cutting. Not fussy cutting. Slow stitching. I don't know why I get those two confused all the time. I added some buttons and ribbon in this little, um, I don't know what they're called, dangle and a bead. And I wanted ribbon through it, so there's no way I was going to use ribbon embroidery because I have no clue how they do that. So I just put some running stitches. I think you can see them. And then I wove my ribbon through the running stitches. So anyway, that's how I did it. Any way that I can find an easier, cheater way to do it, I'm going for it. Okay, I have no idea how many book pages are in this book. I'll have to count them, but here we go, and I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so um, I just added this pocket. It's just scrapbook paper, and I had one of these tags that um, Gail had made, showed how to make them, and they were making sure I'm in frame. Okay, they're made out of, um, she calls them Amazon envelopes, you know, the envelopes, you get the padded envelopes you get in the mail, you can feel the little puffs of um, air under them. You just add fabric and just whatever doodaddies you want on there and you, uh, you stitch around it. So anyway, they're not the most fun thing to stitch around, I will say. This might not be a good way to show this. It's going to turn a lot. Some scrap paper I have left over, so I put it there. And it's the scrap paper that um, matches this page, which... Um, it's the actual first page of the book this address book belongs to, so I'm not sure. I want to take this off. It's not good for showing. <laughs> it's okay for um, having it displayed, but not for showing it page by page. I also had these, this bookmark I had found in my stash. It's got dry flowers and then just a weight here. And I just added it to the ring, and it can flip over at the top, and it can easily be removed because it's just a slip knot. Okay, so first page, whatever was on the front, probably like the title page and all that, I just covered it with scrapbook paper. And then there's the actual title page. I put this page of coffee dyed paper in that I had collaged around the edges. I know Gail has shown this a lot. And I just cut it a little short so where the rings are, uh, it's just plain. So it's got the border and then you can write in the center. This is the tabs, dividers. And I left them just the way they were because they had the pretty background, they had the pretty photos, and places you could write there. And on the back side, they have a solid picture, and it's, each one's different. This is from just a book I have, so it had this pretty um, gardening looking pictures on there, so I added it. Scrapbook paper with a little tuck. I made it out of um, one of my full stamps, so I just, um, let's see how close you can see that. I'll move it up. And I just glued it on as a tuck. And then I had this index card, which I added a well tail to, tab to, and that was a sticker in my shop. And this has been copy dyed. All right, make sure I'm back in frame. All right, uh, another divider. So the picture's different, but the writing space is you know, there, and then you've got a full picture. I guess maybe it's that picture small here and big here. So, and this was leftover calendar page. I like the picture. I had it in the other journal, but on this side it had a big word. It said blooming. Well, I couldn't get the whole thing in here. So I just covered it up with a notepad page and some collage and some lace. Here is one of the pages that come in the book for name and address, phone number and all that. And I had a scrap of scrapbook paper and I just made a um, um, 
pocket. And this reminds me, this is some digital paper, and I think this one is too. If you watched any of the five ring binders, I said I couldn't remember who it was. Well, I just looked it up so I could put it on the description of that five ring binder, and it was Janie B. Journals, and it was Mystery Pack 8 is where this came from. And this is a scrap of scrapbook paper I've had in my stash. This is one of my digitals. I took library um, date due cards and library cards, and then I added a floral image on there. So I had these printed out a long time ago in my stash, and I forgot about my own digital, so I finally found them and dug them out. This is the original page, like I said, and there's plenty of lines you can write on. Next divider is that same picture. Maybe it's every other one. It's a different picture. I don't know. I didn't even pay enough attention to the dividers. I just knew that they were pretty and I wasn't touching them. This is a greeting card with a nice pretty picture on it. Places to write. Scrapbook paper. And let's see. I have a pocket just made out of some white um, cardstock. And I just collaged a few elements on there. This journaling card booklet, just blank paper in the middle of the back, and it's just an image with some lace and uh, a snippet on it. This one, the person had written on it, so I covered it with a label and a little bit of collage there, so you can have still have your writing space. And I think it is the same picture. Every other one's a different picture. This is a note uh, pad, and I just glued it on top and bottom, made a belly band out of it. I had this picture from a magazine. I had put on some uh, book page with some writing space in the back, and I just added one of those little collagey, clustery, I don't know what I'm going to call those things. There, here's a whole bag of them. It's just the scraps from the edges of book page, and I just ran a running stitch with different colors of uh, embroidery floss on it. And this is backed onto some scrapbook paper. Then on this side, I just put some napkins and a little collage. And on the collage, you can see it's made out of fabric and lay a ribbon in that little trim flower. On this page from the book or the binder, I added a notepad page, take your time, and then I just put some washi on it. And on this side of it, I added this tuck. This is was a um, post-it note, and I just glued it the whole thing down on some um, spills that cardstock or some you know, uh, paper that comes in your junk mail and cut around it and it makes a journaling spot or you can also use it, I've had, I've used them as journaling cards. So tuck spots, I think I said that wrong, tuck spots or journaling cards if it's not glued down and obviously you can write on it. Okay, that was a lot to explain um, for something very simple. Um, index card with a sticker on it. I was just trying to organize my stuff when I was trying to clean up when I found some stickers, so. That was great. Digital from Janie B. Journals. And I've stitched around it because I just folded it in half. And then I put a messy journaling spot on that side. Just paper that I've stitched around. All right, the index divider again. This is a um, um, greeting card that there, it's very thin. And I, I think I left the whole thing whole. Instead of cutting it, you know, just the front off. I thought, I think you can write on it here and put it here and write on it. And if not, take them out of the binder and then write on it and put it back. So, And then here's another notepad. I just left it, instead of gluing it down on something, I just left it free flowing. Um, this was a page from the book. I figured there's lots of writing space there. I put one of those um, scrappy divider things. It's just um, strips of paper and it's got a piece of strip of fabric on it with a tab. Just put it on this one. And the color kind of really blends in with these other tabs. So, and I put it in the journal in a place where there was it wasn't behind one of these. So, just stuck my own tab in there. Okay, divider again. This was from something, and uh, I book I guess, and I put some copy dyed paper on the back of it, to um, so you can write on it. This was some more of that digital prints from Janie B Journals, Mr. Pack Eight with the writing space on it. Here's another collage uh, page, the copy by paper, the collage paper on it. Okay, this is a postcard digital, and I looked this one up too. It's Romantica Arts Botanical Postcards, I think is what it's called, and Romantica Arts. And I just printed it on regular paper, so then I felt like I needed it thicker. So I have a book page in the middle, and then some writing paper on the back, and just stitched all around it. 
I made this little tuck out of a, I think it's a picture from a magazine, or maybe it was from um, that original five ring binder, the Better Homes and Garden. I think that's where I got the image of the irises from. And I just backed it onto some, um, another book page so it's thicker. And then I did the corner punch on it. On this page, this is scrapbook paper, and this is a digital from that Janie B. Journals. And I want to call it Junie B. Jones because I know that's what she's playing on, and that was a series of books for young kids. So anyway, Janie B. Journals, and I made it a little stiffer because I just printed it on regular um, copy paper, so I just backed it on some other book page. Put a little collage here of this little picture from, I cut from a book, and this little, um, Make sure you still see uh, flower. It's in just a trim. Let me get up closer. And then that word love I found in my stash, so I just put it in there. And then the journaling cards. This is some scrapbook paper. If I had it left over, I just nipped off the corners. And then this was just a journaling card I had in my stash. A bunch of items collage, and then blank paper on the back. I thought the colors went well with that scrapbook paper. Okay, uh, let's see what we got coming up. On the back side, I just put a sticker. It's called a stacked sticker. And dear Julie Julie showed how to make these a long time ago. You just take a regular sticker and we just put your little bits on there. And it's ready to go whenever you need a sticker. I found this in my stash too when I was organizing and cleaning up. And it is, I'm not really sure what it's meant to be used for, but I thought it's kind of like a little flip. So it's, I put scrap paper, scrapbook paper here and it's really kind of dark to write, but you could add something or you can add a picture or whatever under it, or it's just pretty the way it is. I stitched the top of it, and it's supposed to be perforated there, so definitely wanted to stitch it. And I also reinforced it with some washi tape behind it, which you can't see because it's glued down onto the page. And I nipped out where the rings are so it would open up freely. On this side of that scrap of paper, I just did one of these snippets. One day I got crazy with all my fabric stra uh, scraps. And I think I had some bias tape or something under here. And I just started laying them down and just stitching them on there. And I just had this big long roll and there was no color coordination or anything. But I thought it would go well in this journal that's got all these different flower, colors of flowers. Okay, the last page of this journal was a pocket page. And it had this, it's this green paper with pocket on both sides. I put lace there so you can see the pocket. I had one well, of my faux stamps that I just put a little uh, lace circle behind it and some um, leftover threads from sewing. Just give it some little, uh, I don't know what you would call that, a little something behind it. And then these are pages cut from a book I bought. And you could not, you could cut them out and use them, but you couldn't like scan them or sell them or anything like that. So I just put them in here. They're, they're just from straight from the book page. They can be um, used in the book someplace to decorate or you can just use them to uh, journal on. Okay, on this side of the pocket, there's a the lace again. I put a scrap of scrap of paper and I had this little image cut from a magazine of the gloves and the gardening tools. Make sure you can see it. And then this is one of those um, tags that Gail shows how to make. It's got the packaging in the middle. I think I mentioned one earlier and just different things on it to decorate it. So colors go great. I added a, back, a pocket on the back cover, just some of that scrapbook paper, digital scrapbook paper from Junie B. Journals and Janie B. Journals. See, I did it. Janie B. Journals, oh my gosh. And then this um, journaling card, I, this is an image from an old book, stitched on some, some book page and I just put a label I made on there. You can write on the back. Anyway, that is this journal and I'm gonna have it for sale in my Etsy shop. And um, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next, pro my next project. Bye.